Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. Today, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the ratcheting medical tourniquet. I'm a huge fan of options, so just because I have my favorite tourniquets, mainly the cat tourniquet and the soft T wide, that doesn't mean that something like this won't work better for your specific needs. First and foremost, one of the reasons why I like this tourniquet is because it carries the recommendation of the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care. And essentially what that means is that this tourniquet has gone through extensive evaluations in a variety of different studies and uh, case reports and has been found to be an effective adjunct to stop massive extremity bleeding. So this tourniquet can absolutely save your life and it is uh, evidence-based and will work very well for you in a variety of different situations. So unlike a cat tourniquet or a soft T-wide, this is not a windless tourniquet. This actually has a ratcheting strap, not unlike the binding to a snowboard boot, which is kind of cool and gives you a couple additional capabilities. Uh, with that, it also has a 1.5 inch nylon strap going all the way around, which is the minimum uh, width that a tourniquet can have to carry the recommendation of the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care. It has a bite strap here, which we'll talk about, and can be folded down very, very tightly. So as far as being able to carry this in a variety of different situations, this can absolutely fit down and be placed into pretty much any kind of pocket you can imagine. So if you like to carry it like this, you absolutely can. If you like it to be a little bit thinner, you can stretch it out, throw it somewhere else. Is this a great everyday carry tourniquet? I don't think so. I wouldn't carry it necessarily just because it is a little bit awkward, but if you really wanted to, you could throw this between two belt loops and carry this on your side and it's going to pack down relatively nicely. So let's talk about use really quickly and uh, kind of why I like it and what some of its limitations are. So first and foremost, this tourniquet is placed like any other tourniquet. It does not have a Velcro latch, which brings me to the first use case for these tourniquets, something that I think uh, is imperative. If you are doing any kind of like aquatic operations or you know, you're a scuba diver, spear fisher, somewhere where you could get hurt badly underwater or in a situation where there's lots of mud, dirt, grime, I really like these friction locks because they're not going to get gummed up by anything. Where you have the cat tourniquet, uh, it has two sides of Velcro, which works great in a variety of situations, but once it gets really saturated with a lot of mud or water, that Velcro is not gonna stick as well where this is going to maintain its tension and is going to have a lower failure rate in my opinion. So that's pretty cool. So to put this on, essentially, you just have it sized however you need it. You can do self-application, but it is relatively hard to do, and we'll talk about that in a second, is you throw that on any extremity. We're going to tighten this down as absolutely tight as we can, and then once you get that tight on the limb, you're going to use this buckle, and you're going to ratchet it in, and it's going to compress very, very nicely. So as you can see, this has a ton of take up. So even more than a windless style tourniquet, as you do it more, if this was not put on completely tight to begin with, you can kind of make up some of that slack much better than a cat tourniquet, in my opinion. So with that, get this really tight until blood flow stops. If you need to release it or it's being taken off, you just unhook it just like that. Similar to a snowboard binding, while this definitely uh, has a risk of getting gummed up and not ratcheting as it goes down. What I've noticed with snowboard bindings is that they can get a ton of snow in them, dirt, grime, and they're still going to work relatively well. Where I think the failure points in those bindings is, is like if they're grime and you're trying to get it to release, that can be a little bit trickier, but that's not as big of a deal on a tourniquet as it is to be able to ratchet effectively. But obviously everything has a failure point. So you'll notice this guy right up here. Now with any kind of friction lock tourniquet, when you do this for self-application, the hard part is, is I can't just put this up my arm and pull it. It's not going to go no matter how hard I pull. So I need something to pull against. And that's where this guy comes in. So if you're putting it on somebody else, you can just take this and you can use that to tighten it. Super user friendly in that regard. But if I'm putting this on myself, which is an important uh, distinction for tourniquets, it needs to be able to do this. I can use this as a bite block. So I can take this and then Tighten it just like that. Now, I didn't get that super tight, but this thing has a lot of take up on the strap and I can get that tightened really, really well on my arm. One thing that's cool about the ratchet strap as opposed to a windlass style tourniquet 
if I'm placing it on my arm and I get tired or lightheaded or you know I'm having a, a hard time concentrating because my arm's spurting blood and I release this, it's not just gonna unwind and undo all my pressure. I can do like one click, muster my strength, do another click, and it's going to kind of save my location. It's not going to just unwind. So if you're somebody that's really hard to turn that windlass, you've got uh, you know a lot of arthritis in your hands, or you know you're worried about that dexterity, this is a great option for you here. Uh, now I will say, hang on, got to get this thing off. It's one of the hard parts when it's on your own arm. Is that if you have like a leg entrapment, or you're trying to take this strap apart to throw it around the leg and then up, as opposed to just looping it and riding it up on the leg. That's where this thing has some limitations in my opinion. So here we can get it really big and this could go around pretty much anybody's leg. But if I wanna take it apart, I have to unfeed the strap completely out of those two buckles. Not a huge deal, it will work, you absolutely can do it, but it does require a lot of fine motor skills to thread it through, up through this one here, and even in the studio with just the adrenaline of filming uh, myself, it's a little hard to do, and then feed it back down the green one and then that's your friction lock. That's a little bit more difficult than say just taking the cattail and putting it through uh, its lock or the buckle mechanism on a soft T wide. So if this is something where you do think there's a need to like tourniquet an entrapped extremity where you're gonna have to take it uh, off or maybe get it around some uh, foot gear or something, that's one limitation to consider uh, with this tourniquet. But with enough training, you can train yourself to be able to do that very efficiently. And I'd say 90% of the time you have somebody, you're not going to have to take the strap off to uh, get it in place uh, effectively. Now, I will say there are two other tourniquets that are very similar to this on the uh, COT Triple C's uh, website for uh, recommended items. And that's going to be the TX2 and the TX3. I'll be completely honest, the TX2 compared to this guy, the RMT, I think they're automatically, they're, they're like identical. Um, I'm not a expert in like patents and like how that all works, but like their functionality in, it is the same as far as I'm concerned. Now, if somebody knows like the major difference, let me know, but the buckle's pretty much the same. This guy here, I've noticed that it's just nylon. It doesn't have this little leather veneer sewed to it, but it works the exact same way. And I think it's the exact same thickness. And then the TX3 is the same thing, except it's got a three inch band, which in theory lowers occlusion pressure, reduces some tissue damage, uh, as well as um, uh, decreases the pain when it's placed on a patient, which can be a big deal. With all three of these tourniquets, I believe the ratcheting mechanism is the exact same width, which means that when you're tightening this, you're getting that pressure from this one and a half inch strap over most of your limb, but right here, it's actually going to be 0.75 inches uh, of pressure. Now that's the same with a lot of tourniquets, like the cat tourniquet has an internal band. Uh, I don't know if it's 0.75 or one inch. I'm not quite sure what the width is there, but uh, just because most of the band is this big, you're still gonna have a smaller piece of band right here. Out of those three, I think the really only thing to take into consideration is uh, if you can fit the TX3, I like that thing. I, I'd use the TX3 um, a lot of in a lot of situations, but it's not as compact, uh, which is where this guy uh, shines. And this guy's really, really easy to stow. So like I said, I think this thing will shine in aquatic or muddy environments. Um, it's a nice like backup tourniquet to have. And like we talked about, it's very compact, even though I wouldn't necessarily use it uh, as an EDC tourniquet. So if you have any questions about this or you have any experience using these, let me know in the comments down below and I will see you next week.